from in the beginning to the musical apocalypse, this is The Bible Says What. I'm your host, Mike Wiseman. Exodus 32. As a kid, I was told the story of the golden calf. As an adult, I actually read the story of the golden calf. There was a lot left out. Like when Moses came down the mountain and saw his people worshiping a golden calf, he didn't just burn it down. He burned it down, ground it to a powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. This was not enough for Yahweh. He wanted bloodshed. So he called upon all those who were loyal to him and told each man to strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp, one into the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. Still not satisfied with this punishment, Yahweh told them he would blot out of his special book all those who sinned. And then Yahweh struck the people with a plague. The moral of the story is worship only Yahweh or he'll do really bad things to you. Let's start the show. Is there anything in the Bible that you yourself have an issue with? <laughs> Okay, so it took you reading the Bible to realize that those things were bad for you? Yeah, it actually did. I, I didn't figure I, this out on your own? No, Ted, Ted Bundy could be redeemed. God doesn't kill children. Does, what, what do you think the Passover was? Yahweh sets up a whole system in the Old Testament where you slaughter animals just so he's able to forgive you. Today's special guest is author, entrepreneur, mentor, and Christian podcaster. Ah, man, I was going to say Taki. That was bad. Okay, Taki, yeah, we got this. We got this. <laughs> Listen, Today's we're special... friends now. You can call me Taki. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> uh, I want the audience to know the right one, though. <laughs> we'll get this. We'll get this. <clears throat> Today's special guest is author, entrepreneur, mentor, and Christian podcaster, Takia LaShawn. Welcome to the show, Takia. Hey, Michael. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for helping me with the name. Uh, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about what you do? <laughs> Not a problem. So uh, you said it right, spot on. Takiya Lashawn. I'm an author, an entrepreneur, a mentor, and a TV, radio, talk show, uh, podcast host. And most importantly, as we'll talk about and learn about here, I am a follower of the faith. I'm a believer in God and Jesus Christ. And um, I just believe in sharing my experience. I am not one that's largely huge for religion, but I'm huge on relationship. And so mm. um, I'm a mother of two. Uh, two young adult children now. Uh, my son's about to be 21. My daughter's 27. I still can't believe that because I just turned 25. Um, so, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> do, do the math. Easy People are doing the math in their brain. Yes. Did you catch that one? <laughs> um, but yeah, and I just I am an overcomer and a survivor of um, multiple traumas, and I use my voice and my story and my platform to share and speak about my life to help other people to find their healing, to find their purpose in the pain, and uh, hmm. most importantly, to just walk this life out. Hmm. Awesome. Helping people. I'm all for that. thousand percent. Um, thank you for that. So as far as the, the show goes, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. the po My podcast? Yeah. Yes. What does that all entail? Right. So How does that work? All right. Okay, so the podcast is called Behind This Smile, mm. and what it is is I take a deeper look behind my own personal smile. So the premise of it is back in November of 2024, no, I'm sorry, 2023, hello, um, November 2023, <laughs> the week of Thanksgiving, I actually had a nervous breakdown. Um, I was married, and I divorced my husband, and in the process mm. of separation and divorce, he started to, he started stalking me like legitimate, um, mm. breaking restraining orders, showing up tracking devices on cars, life, lifetime Ooh. movie stuff, stalking me. And yeah. he was arrested for that. And six and a half months later, he was granted a bond. And when I got news uh, from the victim's advocate that the bond was granted, I spiraled. It really mm. impacted me because I had struggled so much to find my peace. And I had a peace knowing that, okay, he's locked up. 
Uh, and so when he was released, I, I spiraled and I just mentally broke down and had a breakdown, cut off all my hair and mm. just sunk. And one day I was laying in bed battling depression and I was flipping through my social media. I do a lot of traveling and speaking and things like that. And in all my pictures, I'm smiling, I'm smiling. I'm looking mm. like I'm having a great time. I'm in Cabo on the beach. I'm in the Bahamas. I'm in the Dominican Republic. Tequila mm -hmm. looks like she's living an amazing life. But me laying in bed battling depression. I said out loud, I said, if people really only knew the truth behind this smile. Hmm. And that was a prompt for me. I felt God just tell me, you know, you need to release what you're going through and you talk about that. And so my podcast hmm. evolved and behind this smile is me going into those stories, stories, picking up a picture of myself, looking at myself smiling, but remembering the truth of what I was dealing with that day, that particular instance behind this smile. And so it's all my stories and my testimonials and those are coming together. And uh, towards the middle of the end of the year, I will launch the book Behind mm -hmm. This Smile. Oh, boy. And how many books will that be at this point? That will be book number seven that is published, so to speak. I have a lot of them in writing and in queue, and I'm just a writer by nature. That's something that writing has been very therapeutic for me coming from multiple traumas. Mm -hmm. I learned to write to release that when there was no one there to talk to or no one to understand what I was going through or maybe the shame or the guilt or whatever I was dealing with, writing was a way to release and it was very therapeutic. So mm -hmm. this one will be published number seven. Wow, absolutely. No, definitely writing is cathartic, uh, podcasting as well, talking it out. Um, these are things that we we know work um, for us to release that trauma a little bit, at least help out. Um, so good job, yeah. man. That's awesome. Holy cow. Uh, seven books. I can't even imagine. I'm, I'm, no, <laughs> I don't have time for that. <laughs> good job, though. Good job. Thank you. It does, uh, it does take some time, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've had the opportunity to write a beauty column and a self-care column for so many years. And so I had a little cheat sheet. Awesome. I kind of compiled some of those articles as well. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Do you have a favorite book? Do I have a favorite book? Hmm. I'm pretty sure I do, but now that you put me on the spot, my <laughs> every last brain cell went running away. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to sound cliche. I know people say, oh, the Bible. But yeah. I mean, that that's my resource. But I, my favorite book. What the ones that you wrote? Yeah, like one of your favorites. That oh, you've the, written. out of the ones yeah, that I wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, yeah. Okay, that helps. Thank you, thank you, friend, for saving Sorry. me there, reeling it in. That's okay. Um, my my favorite book would probably be my first book, which is called mm. ne The name of it is Never Forsaken. It's a memoir, and mm. that book was so pivotal for me. Um, because number one, it was the first book I wrote. It was also the first time ever that I publicly just poured out what I had gone through in my childhood from abuse and molestation mm -hmm. and sexual assault and then living a life of promiscuity because, you know, having a father in the home but not having a father in the home, young women tend to lean towards the first thing mm -hmm. that feels like love. And so, um, so that book was me being me that that was a freedom that I could just say it's out there and there were people in my life that you know oftentimes when you share things with people some people will come around and rally around you and support you and then you got some of those snakes in the mm -hmm. grass that will go well, I'm gonna gossip about it. I'm gonna talk about it my book was the mic drop if we're gonna talk about my story <laughs> I'm gonna talk about my story and so, yeah. so I took my power back in writing my first book so never forsaken hmm. hands down is my favorite book Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, take that power back. Good job. Um, so Never Forsaken, I'm curious, the title. Uh, what does that mean to you, Never Forsaken? Yeah. So Never Forsaken is a biblical phrase. Um, it comes from, it's rooted in Hebrews, I believe it's 13 and 11. Mm. And it talks about how God will never leave us nor forsake us. And mm. that is a scripture that I clung to, um, especially that first book, releasing what I'd gone through from my childhood up to my, you know, then young adult life. I did not grow up in the faith. I did not grow up in a household where church, where we went to church or we really were exposed to God. So I dealt with a lot of those traumas within and of myself. And then when I grew up and found my faith and wrote the book, that was immediately what I wanted people to know and people to hear. And it was a affirmation to myself and a comfort that 
you know, when you think of the word forsake, forsaken, that means to just be completely left alone, to be forgotten, to be not thought about, to not have any kind of um, any meaning to anything or to anyone. But if I'm never forsaken, that meant that no matter what I was going through, no matter what I come from, no matter what I was going to face, I would never be left alone. And so that title, uh, what I talk about in the book, my childhood and all the traumas, you it really gives you an inside look at what I'd gone through and how every one of those situations, um, I came out on top. And mm. I came out on top because I felt like I was never forsaken. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. Um, You're welcome. So, <clears throat> just questions. Sorry, I did. It's, it's so, gonna happen. Um, so never left alone. That's all right. Um, yeah. How do? You, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? Does God's always there? Or um, I know you mentioned a relationship. So like best friend or uh, explain mm -hmm. that a little bit. Help me out. Help me understand. Yeah. Okay. I'll help you understand. Yeah. And that's that's good. I love the question or the promptings because you're spot on with my reference and how I see God relationship best friend. I call God someone that's my best friend. So for instance, I'm hmm. here recording in a podcast studio, studio in my home. This is also what I call my prayer closet. This is a place where I can come and I can sit in the quiet and hmm. the peace with my thoughts and, you know, talk to the God that I serve and never forsaken mean, like you said, never left alone. God was someone when I was going through those traumas or those trials or those issues I couldn't go talk to family or mm. friends or anyone that I thought would understand because of the shame and the guilt or even the lack of me not knowing that what I was dealing with was trauma so mm. me referring to a relationship with God means you and I right now we're in conversation right yes we don't know each other but we're building a rapport we're building mm. a conversation we're building some sort of relational transaction here in communicating i talk you listen you hmm. talk i listen we ask questions we get to know one another so that is what i did in the midst of oh, that is what i did what that's what i'm referring to when i say relationship with god i would come into those when i had dark times in my life I was drawn to sit in those dark places, but in those dark places. And 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 there were many times that I felt like, you know, are you crazy? Is Are you crazy sitting in here talking to, you know, a God or some someone hmm. that you can't see, someone that is not yeah. tangible? The world would call that crazy, right? But for me, I found comfort, I found peace, and I found answers. So, hmm. and, and if that doesn't break it down enough, then you know, please feel free to dig a little deeper. To no, I love it. That's good. No, that was very helpful. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, but I, 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 we're going to, we're going to dive in a little bit more here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use the representation of Spider-Man. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I love Spider-Man. I think it's, he's a great character. He's one of my favorite characters. Yeah, um, I but uh, I can call him my best friend. I can talk to him and help my situation, make me feel a little bit better about certain things. Um, we can talk about my day, maybe get some advice. I don't know, something like that. But at the, at the end of the day, he's he's just that fictional character, and it's a one way conversation. And I right. So it's a strange ringing, just random, um, <laughs> driving me nuts. Um, so as far as um, <laughs> Spider Man, the, the, Colin, <laughs> it's maybe the Spider Man. <laughs> he's ringing a bell. <laughs> um, <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought here. Now, okay, uh, Spider Man. Yeah, so Sorry. he's kind of like my invisible best friend, and it helps me uh -huh. uh, get through situations because um, you know I can't talk to everybody about certain things and blah 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 blah. But at the end of the day, again, it is just that invisible friend. It's not that real tangible relationship. Something that, like if we became best friends, I could call you up and I'm like, yeah. hey, I I need some advice here. Um, hey, I could really use some uh, encouraging words, something like that. You know, right, um, right, right, right. Now, when we enter into prayer with God, uh, when we talk with God, is it that two way street? Is it like we are talking here when you're in your prayer, prayer room? Um, how does that work? Yeah, good question. So this is going to sound a little deep to some people, but we can get deep. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> The voice of God. <laughs> so there are and that's a good point. And I knew mm. where you were going with that. And I love mm. it. 
the voice of God for some people is a cultivated voice. So again, we go back to you and I talking. We're tangible. You talk to me, I can hear you. I speak, you can hear me. So mm. it's like if we, and, and right now we're on a video call as well. Let's say we go way back to, you know, back in the day when yeah. there wasn't video or things like that. That's crazy, right? Back in the day. Yeah, right. um, <laughs> you have a phone when all we could do was pick up a phone. We didn't have cell phones or anything like that. Mm. We just pick up that phone that was into that wall. Mm. And we talked. If I called you today, if you've never met me, you've never heard from me, and I call you and I go, hey, can I speak to Mike? You're going to go, yeah, hey, who is this? I'm like, hey, it's Takia. Okay. And then if I call you a second time, you might go, okay, this voice sounds a little familiar, but who is this again? It's Takia. Mm -hmm. Third or fourth time, if I keep calling on you, you're going to... Mm -hmm. Hey, Takia, you're going to recognize and pick up my voice. Mm -hmm. Cultivating a relationship with God is like that. When you can, oh. and, and I'm going to talk about my personal experience because yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm trying to teach people. I just want to talk about my personal experience mm -hmm. and my relationship, but hopefully people will learn something. So that's what I meant when I went into that, when I go into that prayer closet and I sit down mm -hmm. in the silence, okay? I am cultivating a relationship with the voice of God. And I know that sounds crazy, but I, I, I wouldn't say crazy, just a little different. You know, I mean, yeah. it's it's just it's strange. Little, okay. You know, I mean, but not crazy. It's that strange. There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Thank you. I don't. I, I like that. A little <laughs> different. It's 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 that's good. What did you just say? It's uh, it's foreign. It's mm. foreign if you're not used to that. It's like if we travel to another country, we don't speak the language. It's a little different because it's foreign yeah. to us. We don't understand yeah. it. But if we spend time more immersing ourselves in that culture, we're gonna pick up something. We're gonna pick up, you know. Um, a word or two. And so mm. that's one way for me. I, mm. I I sit and I do hear God's voice. I hear his direction. I hear his instruction. Mm. Now, what about the person that goes, I don't know how to hear God's voice, or I don't know that I believe that God speaks back, or I don't know if that's really real to Kia. Then there's the Bible. Okay. Mm. I've been taught and I've come to learn that the Bible is God's inerrant word. It is his instructions for our life. Mm -hmm. It's also our manual. It's also the way that if I can't audibly hear him, then I can mm -hmm. get in scripture. And that's the way that he speaks to me. It's just like we talked about that scripture in Hebrews 13. Um, for me, when I read it, it impacted. It's something within me um, resonated because of what I was dealing with, what I was going with. And so that word, that scripture spoke to me, okay? Now mm. you might read that scripture and depending on your life situation or what you're dealing with, you might perceive it a different way or it might speak to you differently. And that's the beauty of God's word is one scripture can mean 500 different things to 500 different people. We have to be careful with our personal translation of how we interpret it because that's mm. where you get into a lot of confusion and things like that but i feel like those are the two ways and that's the thing that i've learned is to read the bible sit in my prayer closet flip the light on or yeah. pull my cell phone up and there's some sort of word for what i'm dealing with so that's a way to hear god's voice that's a way for god's voice to be tangible and then mm. for me personally i have what's called giftings. I believe that we all, that God gives us all talents and giftings. Like I complimented you. Mm. I said, man, your voice is amazing for radio. It really <laughs> is. That's, that's something that's a talent and a gifting that you can use. And I'm sure you have plenty other talents and giftings, but in the Bible, <laughs> it talks about God giving gifts to the fivefold ministry and the purpose of those giftings. And there are some of us that have the ability to, to hear God in that way. And I, Hmm. say some of us, I don't want it to sound like it's a special gifting. Yeah. It's the fact that I will go sit still long enough in his presence to hear his voice. Didn't Meditation. happen overnight. Yeah. It, took, it took manifest manifestation, hmm. took some time to learn and build that relationship. Like we're talking about here. If I hmm. hopped on a podcast tomorrow and didn't get my face on camera, you'd remember my voice. You'd recognize my <laughs> voice now. Thank you for that. Lots there. You answered a couple of questions I did have to. What, like, what is the Bible and whatnot? That was great. That was great. Okay. Um, okay. Man, right. so many other questions just popped up, though. So I'm going to go with <laughs> um, what happens when you open the Bible and you see something like 
uh, Leviticus 10, 7. Do not leave the tent of uh, entrance to the tent of meeting or you will die because the Lord's anointing oil is on you. What happens if you come across something like that or just stone disobedient children or, you know, gay people or your neighbors, you know, yeah. what happens when yeah. we come across yeah. those kinds of verses? And that's so deep, you know, and I don't want to make light of it, but I want to say, well, I slam the Bible back and go, I don't want to read that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> At least you'd be honest. Be I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, but seriously. Um, hmm. and, and, and it's progressive because I would be remiss if I sat here and said, oh, I know all the Bible. I don't, I know hmm. what I know and I continue to read it, but in Leviticus, which is in the old Testament, hmm. the thing about that is hmm. you have to read the Bible in a manner. So like, if you pick a scripture and you go, oh, okay, I'm just going to pull this scripture out of it. Well, what happened before that scripture? Hmm. What was said that led up to that and what happens after? So a lot of okay. times we take a chunk of that verse and we just read it and we go with that. And so you have to really dive in and study the word and um, understand it. But to address mm -hmm. your question about, you know, these bad things, like how can there be a good God if there's so much mm -hmm. bad things that happen in the world? Yes. And the Bible what kind as of well. God talks so, about yeah. stoning children in the yeah. Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And, and, and you find out again, it comes from a space of reading it and understanding what God's position was on that. I don't have all the answers for it, but I believe that God is a sovereign God. Now, when it comes to topics like that, homosexuality, things like that, I believe that people are people. Okay. I believe that we all come here. We all come here in the form of, this is what I believe, that mm. we are human beings, we are spirits that live in a body, and we have a soul, every last one of us, okay? Mm. And so when we get on this earth and we have impact or influence or things like that, we all have choice. We all get to choose. And it's not up to any of us to judge the choices of another. I believe there's only one judge, that being God. And with that said, that does not mean that we are to look down or mistreat anyone else that's lesser. Because we can talk about the topic, not just homosexuality, but we can talk about murder. We can talk about lying. Mm -hmm. We can talk about cheating. We can talk about stealing. Those are all things that are not pleasing to God, every last one of them. But huh. we don't surface mistreat people because oh well you know you lied to me so i'm just gonna know i mean every situation well, is different independent but you i mean know what i'm saying on the surface first off thank you um you haven't read the bible all the way is that what you're saying uh, no i have i have okay, read yes. i've actually okay. read the bible all the way through a couple of times several times but what i'm saying is that's a lot to retain i'm not a bible scholar yeah. Yeah, meaning yeah, no, no, i yeah. did not go to theology school or mm -hmm. anything like that I've learned what I learned by being in church, by reading the Bible, by having my own personal relationship. But what I was just saying is that I don't want this to sound like my word is law. I'm going off knowledge, hmm. but knowledge that is evolving. And so, yes, I do read the Bible daily. I've read it through. But you know what? Something else is so interesting. The Bible hmm. is not intended to read all the way through page by page. Like we would pick up a book and read it at uh -huh. page one and end at page 200, you go in chronological order. Right. The Bible is not intended to be read like that. It's it's pieced together. And so you have to kind of find a, a, a timeline and piece mm -hmm. it back together. And so that's why I say I've read it through several times, but I don't read it just to be like, well, I'm just reading it to say I got it done. I want to study it. And so I'm still yeah. learning and still evolving and gotcha. still, you know, I'm, I'm, you'll hear me say a lot too, well, scripture says, or this scripture, I may know what the scripture says, but sometimes I have to go back and go, no, where is that scripture at? You know, I'm not one <laughs> yeah. of those people. No, I you definitely got some have notes as well. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you have 100%. some people that will spit it out. They know it, they know it, they know it. But then oftentimes too, mm -hmm. it's like, well, but do you know what it means? Exactly. But do you know it? it? That's and how my see, mom used to say, you know, your exactly. Bible, but you don't know right. your Bible. Well, now I do a little exactly. bit more. Exactly. So I want to know, like, what and do you do with these yeah. really bad ones, though? Like, I, I understand that you don't understand it and you want to read into it and you look into it more. Mm -hmm. Is there one specifically yeah. that you've been kind of looking into that you read that you had an issue with? Mm, yeah, you know what? Lately, I've been reading in Hosea. And Oof. Hosea is the story. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Hosea is the story of Gomer and Hosea. And Hosea was a prophet who God told 
go get this prostitute and marry her and treat her like she's just the best woman mm -hmm. ever. And he used her, he used Hosea and Gomer as an example to the children of Israel to show like, you sinned, you've not claimed me, you've disowned me, you've uh -huh. just basically been acting like a bunch of wild children, but I'm going to show you that I still love you even in all your mess and your prostitution with other gods. That is really hard for me right now um, because going back to my story, I married, I separated, I divorced, I ended up the victim mm. of intimate partner stalking by my ex-husband, who is someone that I firmly feel like sitting in my prayer closet, seeking the voice of God, that I heard God say yes. Hmm. Why would I get a yes for someone to mistreat me and then end up in this situation? So that's, that's personally a good question. Yeah. been a journey. It's it's a question I have cried and asked God about. Hmm. And, and I have had to evolve into finding peace because the answer that I got from him was to Kia, it takes two people to obey my obey my voice, meaning it takes two things, two people to do the right thing. And there's still a lot of questions wrapped up in there. Yeah. But the book of Hosea is one that's really hard because it's like, well, God and and Mike, Michael, I'll tell you, huh. I had never been married. This was my first marriage. And we're not talking huh. long ago. I married at I just turned 47. I married at 44. So it was very it was not a hmm. very long lived marriage. But to go all that time, all my life waiting, seeking, hoping for the right one and then to end up with a mess, so to speak. Mm. It's like, well, God, why, why would you allow that? Why would you do that to me? I come mm. and I pray and I seek you and I sit in the closet and I look to hear your voice. Why? So that is yeah. one of those hard questions. And uh, I've, I'm slowly allowing God who's sovereign, who leaves nothing unused, even the pain and the bad and uses mm. it for purpose. And a mm. part of the answer to my why is exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm speaking. I was never sharing my story and I've been forced to get my voice out here and talk about how I've pushed through and how I've come out and how God helped me through those moments of suicidal ideology and wanting to take mm. my life, wanting to harm myself, wanting to hurt myself. So yeah, that's my answer. There's a lot of hard things in the Bible just that just don't make sense. And I even tell God, I'm very candid with him. I have a friendship. I have a relationship with them. So I yeah. don't come in my closet with like spooky mirror music and woo, you know, thus yeah. and thou. And I come in and I'm like, look, God, I don't like how that felt. What's up with that? Yeah. You know, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I would throw that I back have. in his face the whole force and never leave me, never forsaken thing. You're supposed to be yeah. my best friend, my protector. There you what the crap, there dude? You go. Like, how can we be friends there, at there this point? Go. Like, what kind of friend is he? Don't do that. I don't to know. See, <laughs> see, we have totally different things. I, I would be talking a little more harshly. And then, does he answer you oh, when you I've, ask listen, these harsh I've, questions? I've been there. Okay, I've been there. I've taught, I listen. I do not want to, what did you say? Please do not try this at home. Yes. But I've dropped a couple of F bombs in the prayer oh, no. closet with God oh, no. as well. Okay. <laughs> but that's my uh, that's my honesty. And a lot of people will go, What? You talk to God? Well, no, 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 I don't. You know, you he talk to God with that mouth? like, okay, take care. <laughs> you got one more F bomb. Okay. And that's what I know. But here's the thing: I'm being real because in relationships, we're real with each other, right? Mm. And that's the picture that's been painted of God is that he is just sitting, waiting to attack us, to send us to hell, to hurt us, to harm us. No, mm. he's not. He's a friend. He is a father. He is the lover of our souls. He mm. knows what we're going through. It doesn't feel good, but he uses and he doesn't waste anything. He doesn't but waste how is he, anything. How is he there for you then? How is he there for you? Because if he wasn't actually there for you, how mm. is he there for you? Just the, the the Bible verses that help and inspire you or like, I don't understand. Help, help me understand. Yeah. Yeah. So comforting comfort. He sends you comfort or like a hug, like a virtual so hug. So I don't get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I guess we can say his presence that is like a, a, a comforting, soothing, huh. on all enveloping hug. God's presence is tangible. When And here we go again, Michael, yeah. when you take that time, there's scripture in Psalm 37, four, that says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of 
of your heart. There's also mm. another scripture. That in, seems very optimistic, but. <laughs> <laughs> but again, is how that, do you know okay. that's him so feeling optimism, that? How do you know it's good. that feeling is him coming into the room? How do you know it's not right. like it could be a, an invader from Mars that's invisible and has like a radiation field? I don't know. I'm just guessing crap here. But like there's so many different <laughs> options you have. It could be anything. It could be right. Spider-Man. It could be anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you have the best friend that you can't see. That, right. And then that you he, can't he doesn't help you in your time of need. He sends you good feelings instead of actual help, you know, like so, Spider-Man saving the day type thing. So presence of God. And again, <laughs> I'm talking about my personal experience. Yeah, I don't know what everybody else, but presence of God. Presence of God is tangible. I am a worshiper, meaning I am someone that even if I don't have the words to say or the words to speak, I will sing or mm. I will hum a tune. And I believe that in itself is self-soothing, but also it is focusing on God. It is me telling God, God, I thank you. Like, for instance, having that nervous breakdown, rocking back and forth, mm. feeling like my mind was slipping. I sat in my prayer closet. God, I thank you. God, I will not lose my mind. God, I bless you. God, I know that you are a healer. God, and mm. that is something that is self-soothing and it's stirring something in you. And it goes back to remember what I said. We are humans. We um, are spirits. We have we have a body or we have a body and mm. we are a soul. We live in a body and we have a soul. If we are a spirit, if you believe that you are a spirit, God is a spirit. And if you are a spirit, the word of God says that those who do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. Those who worship God in spirit and truth. So if I have a spirit and I'm speaking those, God, I thank you, God, I praise you. It's stirring my spirit up, which is connected to the spirit of God. And I feel huh. that tangible presence. God loves to be honored. God loves to be recognized. Yeah. God He's loves to be all about that. Um, acknowledged. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so if I'm acknowledging him, there's also a scripture that says that when my people call, I've already answered. He says that I will not, I will incline my ear to you i will bow down and listen to you so for me i mm. can feel a stirring i can feel a tangible presence of god and it just becomes like this number one if there was a burden i feel it lifted i feel it lifted i feel free i feel light and also when his presence comes in there is also not a heaviness but a there's a change there's a shift in the atmosphere and there's this this presence okay i i, I don't yeah. know how to explain it to someone who hasn't Dude. experienced it go ahead well i grew up in the church um so yes mm -hmm. i've gotten warm fuzzies during uh what was called i'm sure you know about it praise and worship i felt mm -hmm. the warm fuzzies mm -hmm. but I yeah. feel warm fuzzies, that kind of thing, when I watch a really good movie or or a heartfelt movie or a really good song comes on that I love, you know, and I, at the middle of a concert, you know, and that your favorite song from the band comes right. on. Oh my god! Like everything in you is just electric. I don't, <laughs> I don't call that Spider Man. I call that just emotions. Right. Like you know, these are my emotions. Mm -hmm. These are this is what happens when these certain circumstances go. come into yeah. play. And when you're telling yourself all of this, mm -hmm. and you you feel that you are connected to this this almighty thingy. Um, yeah, that's going to give you a boost. Do you, do you know what LARPing is? LARPing, L-A-R-P-I-N-G, LARPing, live action role play. Educate me. It's a live okay. action role live play. Action so it's people role. in the park you see with the swords and the and the fake shields got and it, whatnot. Got it. Yeah, got yeah. It. Uh -huh. That's kind of how I see it. it. It's we're investing okay. into this universe and we're pretending we are in this universe talking to this universal being or we're fighting this mm -hmm. knight but we're not really fighting a knight. It's just, you know, Bob from down the street who's, who's a computer mm -hmm. technician. So, <laughs> Bob down the street. <laughs> hey, Bob. So that's kind of how I see it is, is it's, it's that wishful okay, thinking. Uh -huh. It's that pretend game. We, we just, we're just continuing it on to now we're going to do it with religion. Um, and I, and I kind of see that as the same thing with the prayer and all of that. Um, but I want to go back to Hosea because that is a good point that you brought up. How far did you make it into Hosea? Did you make it to, 
I don't know, chapter nine? Oh, no. Oh, no, dear Lord, I'm not done. I keep picking oh, okay. it up and putting it down. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing, you know, it's, listen, healing is a journey. I always mm. tell people, um, healed, H-E-A-L-E-D, past tense, and healing, mm. H-E-A-L-I-N-G, present, <laughs> are two different things. And so, um it's I'm still raw in my healing and what I went through. And then I bounce around. I mean, hmm. you know, I'll, I, I've i read it, yeah. um, but I, I, I bounce around reading different topics. So it depends. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm still reading through Hosea. Yeah. Well, let's dive into Hosea a little bit more here. Uh, spoiler alert. Okay. This is what's going to happen later in Hosea. Um, God's going to get mad. <laughs> um, we talked about the forsaken. We talked about the never leaving. We talked about the forgiving. Um, but this verse kind of craps in the face of all of that. And just one verse right in particular, Hosea 9, 16, I will slay your cherished offspring. That's God speaking. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's doing this because they worshiped other gods. And I've heard it mm -hmm. said that they were sacrificing some of their children to this you know, false God, air quotations there. So God comes in and he kills all their children and then says, Stop worshiping other gods. Now I've killed all your children. But why? Why would he kill the kids? And he makes them suffer. He gives them wombs that miscarry and breasts that are dry. So these children are starving. They're being sl slain by God. Um, so, and this isn't the only place he does this kind of thing. He 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 raises right. up the, uh, the, in Habakkuk, he raises up the Babylonians to Go across the country and start slaughtering people that don't listen exactly. to him. Yeah. You know, and then you got the Passover, the flood, where he kills all the kids there, David's kids, um, all those different things. So in these circumstances, when the, the God you have a best friend relationship with is a documented child killer, how do you get past that? So again, I feel like you have to, and you know, if you paint it and put it like that, hearing it that way, that absolutely will stir people to anger or to rejection of God, a documented child killer. But then we can't disregard everything in the book of God and all that he did hmm. and the purpose that was behind it. I'm not saying, you know, oh, I advocate for a child killer. No, absolutely not. But also you have to dig a little deeper because God is a God of covenant. God is a God of his word. God is a God of grace and mercy, but he's also a hmm. God that is serious about lineage and about purpose and so in those instances and i imagine this to be one of those is where there was some sort of threat it's almost like um what do i want to use what do we want to use here hmm. it's almost like if you have some threat of an illness okay okay child care what well, child care thank you so we'll hmm. say when my kids were little i took them to daycare right yeah when a child goes to daycare, you're exposed to all of these other kids, the, the workers and the children. They're coming mm -hmm. around all these other children and it's kind of it's a community and it's a happy community. It's healthy for the most part. But if one child comes in with some sort of virus or some sort of flu, what does the daycare say? They tell you in advance, hey, look, if your kids are sick, we do it at work everywhere. If your kids are sick, stay home. Do not bring them here. Not because we don't care about that child, not because we don't love about that child, not because we're going to treat that child any different, but we want to protect all the other children that are here. We don't want something that someone has that could be debilitating to come in and disrupt and shut down everything that's going here. So hmm. again, so we should in kill no those way, kids. shape or form. Nope. That's not what I said. Definitely not that. <laughs> okay, no so shape. God had it wrong. <laughs> Killing the kids is the wrong way to go about so, it. They should have just kept kept the kids at home <laughs> until they got better, <laughs> or maybe sent them to a different school. I don't understand the problem. The 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 the, the killing them. I think that is my issue. It's it's not just I killing don't... them, but it's then the way he decided that was the best way to do it was to starve them, right, or right. slay them. And you know? I mean. If, again, if you ask me, yeah. I don't have all the answers. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I understand it or try to break it down and go, we'll go to this scripture. I'm not going to do that. How would you have handled this? God is it? sovereign. And How would you have I'm handled this God. situation? I <laughs> no, I mean, if, if you I'm had this God. situation where there's a town that's um, doing bad things and there's a town that, that just won't listen to you, they just keep doing these bad things and you're trying to help them and look, guys, just stop doing these bad things and everything will be great. 
What what would well, you do if they I didn't listen it, to you? Would you kill their kids? In, threaten to kill their kids? It, or what, it, what would you do? Yeah. In today's modern day in society, I don't I don't think we have I don't I don't think that's a realistic question because we don't have hmm. you would go to jail for doing something like that. But you know what? Let me be honest. The hmm. first thing that popped into my mind is, well, they did in slavery. How do we justify slavery? Rosewood. They went in and hmm. they killed children and men and women. That's how mm -hmm. they handled that town. Yeah, and, and that's a bad that thing. Yeah. Over we and see over that over. as a bad thing. It is thing. a bad thing. Yeah. Right. So then, yeah. So, but so again, to go back to I just believe that God's a covenant. I I can't sit here and say, well, I would handle it this way. Would I go kill children? Of course not. That's, of course not. That's yeah, not my heart. of course that's not. not. We wouldn't do I that. Am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. But I mean, it... <laughs> uh, but if we can see these things as bad things, see, these are things that are stopping me from being friends with your friend. Um, the things right, that he's done right. in the past. I'm going to go through the book of right. his autobiography and the things that he's done. I can't uh -huh. find anything that he's uh -huh. done that's compatible to or or, or 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 going to wash away all the horrible things. You know what I mean? Ooh, so all the bad things minute, he's done is outweighed all the good things Wait a minute, Michael. Done. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. no. In the no. Bible. In the Bible. He did. And I mean, in the yeah. Bible. Yeah. I mean, we just celebrated those of us who believe in the faith, we just celebrated Easter, which Why is, is known that as resurrection and it's Holy Week. And it's leading up to, for those in the faith, it answers your question. You said, I can't find anything in the Bible where right. he has, where I can justify or where he's wiped anyone out for the sake of any good. He's God in- Kind of, but yeah. I, I can't- Form like of the, man. The good things over the bad. Earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He came to earth in the form of man in the flesh as the son of God, Jesus Christ. Right. And the whole purpose of G and I know that you know this, but the whole purpose of Jesus Christ was to wash out and wipe out all the sins for us, for mankind. So mm. God in the form of his own self, put him on himself through torture and torment. Right. And a what is it called? Ig I always say it wrong. Ignominious. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Ig Ignoranious? Ignorani I don't know. Good luck. Ig ignominy is something like that. No. <laughs> Y'all But why it, is that Google a good it. thing though? I don't see Hebrews 9 22. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. God refuses to pe kill uh, or uh, forgive people without killing something. And it has to be not just regular blood, he wants special blood. And so he has to clone himself to kill himself to himself so he doesn't keep being mad at us for the things that we did that pissed him off. I don't see this as a good thing. He needs it's, blood to forgive people. Do you need blood to forgive anybody? When's the last time you forgave somebody? Did you ask for them to kill a pet or the son of God? I don't I know. Think, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, but I, I just, I just don't think we can compare ourselves to a higher being to God. I mean, I get what you're saying. I do. Yeah, I do. But well, it just doesn't I, make sense. We can so forgive naturally. It like doesn't. It's, it doesn't. It, you know, and then, but he has to have blood. Can we? And then it's a good yeah. thing. I don't understand why that's a good thing. Why does that's he have to have to kill friend. himself? To save us from himself is a good thing. I just don't understand. Again, the bad. It's I, bad. He needs blood for forgiveness. That's bad. That's bad, man. I, don't, I, don't, I can't get behind that. Kills children. I can't get behind that. Original sin. Oh, my God. But we can get there. There's a whole lot of problems there. Hellfire. Do you think hellfire is real? Again, more problems. Where's the good? Show me the good. Help me understand the good. I'm good. No, I I'm know good. you're good. You're great. Life you're wonderful. The life, but but, <laughs> but I but there's plenty but there's a whole Hebrews 11. We can mm -hmm. go back to Hebrews yeah. chapter 11 called the faith chapter and it does talk about that good of everything from Abraham on up to Jesus Christ. But I don't and see on it up though. To Paul and on up to Do you not just see claim. it in your life? No, I don't see the, the in the Bible. I don't see the good from Abraham uh -huh. okay. to Paul. I don't see that yeah. good Abraham and Isaac. Okay. Let's talk about that story. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. God says, go kill your kid to me. So, uh, and Abraham's like, yeah, sure. What? 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 This yeah. is a test. Why? Why is it a test? Does God not know Abraham's heart? Does he not know his mind? He already knows. He doesn't need to do a grotesque test. More bad things. More bad. I'm just telling you. That's bad. It just outweighs. So, the, there's nothing. I can't. Yeah. So it's it's what I'm hearing. And I, I guess hmm. I want to get a better understanding from Absolutely. you. Because... We're outlining all the bad, but mm -hmm. 
when you have people that come on and they're voicing the good, do we just throw that out? I, or the good, where's the good in the, the Bible? The goal though? is the is the goal right? Is the goal just to throw out the Bible? Is no, the goal well, just I mean, to throw we can, out the Bible want, and to but th- <laughs> but you said it was a good book, we, so and I'm trying to figure out the good part of it. And you said it was the sacrifice of Jesus, which I find gross and pointless. Mm-hmm. So that's not really good. You said Abraham and, and Abraham's story. That's terrible as well. Um, so w- where's the good in the Bible? That's what we're looking for. Show me the love. Okay. <laughs> so that's why you had me on. You have me on so I can talk about and testify of the God that I believe in that I serve. Yes. And I just talked about how I resort to, I come from childhood abuse. I come from sexual molestation. I come from homelessness. Mm. I, I come from having two children that deal with bipolar depression, PTSD, anxiety. I have a daughter who has in front of me tried to commit suicide twice. Mm. I have a son who went head on into a cluster of oak trees. And when the first responders pulled up they thought him to be doa i have been in surgery at tw- uh, in 2019 and on the or table stopped breathing three times and by the way i told god before i went into surgery please just let me die but he didn't i can go on and on and on so i'm focusing and i'm telling you of the goodness of god in my life yeah. i can't speak i can't speak for everyone else But I can speak for the fact that when I was enduring in every one of those moments, every one of those moments were moments that I turned to a God and asked for help. Even in this, even sitting on a podcast, and I count it an honor. I'm honored to be here. I'm honored that you said, hey, come sit with me and talk to me about your faith because I just don't believe it. I just, I, I don't believe it. I've turned from it. I've walked away from it. I haven't experienced what you've experienced. This right here, I count it an honor and I count it as an open door that God is allowing me to be on a platform to share my personal testimony and my story. And so to pull apart and pick apart the Bible and dissect it, like I said earlier, I'm no theological scholar, but I am a woman who believes and walks in faith in every aspect of what I've done, every one of those pains that I walk through, God allowed me to use it purposefully Mm -hmm. to go from homelessness to becoming a seven figure income earner to watch my son again, who they said was DOA stop breathing on the emergency room table. And when I laid my head on his chest, I could not tell you why, This is the first thing that came out my mouth. But what I said was, God, I'll still trust you. And he started breathing again. My dog took a razor to her wrist in front of me and she dug it so deep. But when I say, Michael, she missed a vein. There's no way logically to explain if you cut your wrist horizontally and you slam it into your wrist and drag it. I watched her bleed out the sides of her arms and not her vein. And I have testimony and testimony and testimony. That's what I said. I'm the inspirational beauty boss. I am someone that has walked through trauma and I am someone that has seen the miraculous in my life. And I am someone the same way that we don't have answers to why God did those negative things. I have seen the goodness of God and I couldn't even give you the answers of why my life has gone the way that it has other than the fact that I continue to keep talking about the relationship and this best friend of mine. So Hmm. I don't have the answers you're looking for, but I am able to talk about and testify of those moments where God sat with me. These are not light topics to just pass Hmm. over. They are topics that this is my life. These are very real things that I've dealt with, including day to day battling depression Hmm. and suicidal thoughts and things like that. When I get in that space, in that place, he's the person that I seek. He's the person that comforts me. Whether someone believes he's fiction or nonfiction, I have a relationship. And that's why I say I don't do religion. I don't do religious titles. I don't Hmm. do religious doctrine. I don't do religious um, battles or discussions. I do relational because a relationship, I could talk to you about a relationship. You know, so I, I, I may not have the answers you're looking for, but for me, I, I, I can't paint a picture of just a, a nasty, mean God. Do I understand why some things happen in the Bible? Absolutely not. 
Do I like it? I talked to a friend of mine, a sister of mine. She just, my nephew was murdered January 1st of this mm. year. He was 14 years old. He was a baby. Mm. Why? Why God? Why? Because let me tell you something else that I have not said publicly. The night before that shooting, I had a dream. I had a vision. I saw police lights. I saw flashing red lights. It woke me out of my sleep twice. I got up in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, I actually saw a vision of a, a, a spiritual being in my room. And I began to pray immediately. Three times in that night, the next morning I wake up. I knew I didn't know what had happened or what was going to happen, but my nephew was murdered. In that, my son had just moments before the way that this happened, my sister's home was shot up at random. She's not involved in anything. Her kids aren't out on the street dealing drugs, doing wrong. It was a random neighborhood shooting. And my 14 year old nephew was hit by a bullet. Mm. Okay. My son had just left. Mm. Okay. My son, my son's car <laughs> just a month ago, burst in flames with him driving in it. He purchased a vehicle. Yeah, holy cow. He picked, he picked it up. He drove it 30 minutes, 30 minutes down the road, and it, it blew up with him in it. He jumped what? out of it, okay? What is going on? So, I thought you had this great best friend. He's supposed to be protecting you. Spiritual if, warfare. Nope, if there's, I there's, was there's, your there, because we can't disregard best God. Friend. If I was your all-powerful you best friend, though, He's been there. I would keep you from these things. I would send you more than feelings. Has, I would have saved. He has like, kept me He from could have things. blocked every My bullet that came still... to that house. He could have made the explosion be been so talking. small that nothing happened. But he that would have been amazing. Wouldn't, wouldn't that have been be more of a miracle? Talking. Like these bullets all stopped on the lawn and none of them hit the, the house. I think that we, we would definitely what's be talking about that. Is that my son is, <laughs> what's amazing is that my son is here. I mean, yes, that is amazing. Because thousand you know percent. why? That's... The, pow the power of prayer. But, I am wow. a praying mother. I believe in I, prayer. I, I also, I want to say this. Don't doubt. Me. There's a, such a thing as spiritual warfare, because if we are going hmm. to focus on God, what about Satan? What about the devil? Why the did God, God create the devil? Lucifer. Why would God create a bad guy? He was guy? an angel. He didn't create he didn't create a bad guy. Did he know he, he was going to be a remember, bad guy eventually? Luc Lucifer, remember Lucifer was an angel. Yeah, he was But did God know that was going to happen? I sure in the worship of God. God is all knowing. He did. He, exactly. So he, he knew when he created Lucifer he the angel that Lucifer the angel would become the ultimate bad guy. He knew this getting into it. He also knew so that letting gonna, the snake so in would be a bad deal. I'm just saying he he is the so creator. He's the one the, who made it this way. Sorry. So we're going to take the blame <laughs> off of, that's okay. That's okay. Right. I know you get on a roll. I can tell you are passionate about this, but I'm passionate about what I believe we're in. Good. Too. We're good. This is great. Um, so we're going to, we're, I know it's good. So we're going to take the actions of Lucifer, his own personal choice and blame mm -hmm. God. No, we, we are going to blame have... both of them because God has some responsibility in this. If he created this exactly. being, knowing exactly what he was going yes. to do, God is also responsible mm -hmm. for the actions of the bad guy. So when the bad guy does things bad, so as, God knew that was gonna happen and created him regardless of that. He said, I know this guy so is going to assault children, but you know, I'm, I'm a child, document child killer anyways. But anyways, that's beside the point. But he knows that this guy is going to hurt children and he says, I know that, but I'm going to release him because why? Why? Like, what was the point? What's the point in creating a bad guy? So what about parents? And these are going to be, like I said, well, they're not, I don't want to say trigger, trigger, triggering statements, but what about parents hmm. that have children that they've raised that become school shooters? We're going to blame. Well, we have courts well. of law that, that, you know, we just had some recently that they are going to be in trouble now because their kid did that. I saw so that. we are Holding people that. accountable for their actions. And God's actions, he needs to be held accountable for. His killing of children, so how do you creating the ultimate bad so how do you guy. Hold God? You know? So how do you hold God accountable? You just turn our backs on him. Is that how you're holding God accountable? Shutting same him way I life? hold, it's the same way I hold Darth Vader accountable for killing all those kids. I don't worship him. Which is? I don't worship him. Okay. I mean, okay. I don't worship. So you're holding God accountable. If he like these characters, yes. I, I and sorry, I don't mean offense, but to me, he's just a character. No, so I'm going to hold this. Yeah, I'm going to hold this character 
in the same light as I hold all the other bad guy characters. Well, not all of them, because some are yeah. kind of cooler than others. It just depends on the bad guy. But yes. <laughs> and the reason. Yeah, like Ursula um, from Ursula from The Little Mermaid is cool. She's a great She character. is pretty badass. I like her. <laughs> um the original. I don't know about the the newer stuff. I haven't really I don't know. I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. But, um, uh, what's her name? Um Melissa McCarthy played Ursula. Did she do it? Oh, I haven't seen too many of the live action yeah, redos. Um, I don't know. The, yeah, I know. I wasn't a fan of him either, but I mean, just for, you know, good show. I watched the yeah, last every. I'll have to I watch it. I grew up on Little okay. Mermaid, so I yeah. had to watch it. But Urs uh, um, Melissa McCarthy played Ursula, and she killed yeah. it. Good. I'll have to watch that, yeah. at least her part, because I do love the uh, Ursula. She's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, these characters, exactly. I'm going to hold a character accountable, just like I hold any other character accountable. Um, and until God comes down yeah. and tells me something differently, I'm going to keep sure. thinking this way, because I've read his book. The one he wants me to read, my mm -hmm. instruction manual for life, mm -hmm. and his autobiography, mm -hmm. and and I can't get past these things. There is a wall, and I, I, I discussed this before a couple times. There's a wall. There's this yeah. documented child killer wall, and on the other side of it is worshiping God. I can't get past this wall and all the bad things. This documented yeah. child killer wants to stone gay people, thinks slavery is a good thing, women are less less than men, all these different things, that all these different ideas that God Where? has. I can't get past yeah. that. Yeah. Where I, I don't recall reading in the Bible that God wants to stone gay people. Oh, that's he also just, in Leviticus. I mean, we could say yes. We could say we could say people. <laughs> no, but um it's but definitely listen, but listen it's to definitely this. kill gay men. Listen, yeah. Listen to this though. Leviticus I get twenty saying. verse thirteen. Sorry. Leviticus twenty verse thirteen. That's if a man okay. lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what mm -hmm. is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own hands. And then he repeats this again uh, in, in a couple places. But um, in Romans, he turns people gay and then punishes them for it. It's 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 maddening. It's a Romans one twenty four through twenty seven. Uh, it's it's really strange. Lots of strange stories. And then there's a story about divorcing. Did you, did do you know what Jesus says on divorce? Go ahead. That's a. I, uh, Jesus says it's, it's, hold on. Now I gotta, now I gotta look for my things here. <laughs> See, I have everything kind of organized a little bit here. Um, I was prepared for you to have some notes because. Yes. <laughs> yes. You'll, you'll like to, Jesus to on divorce. But here's the thing. Matthew here's 532. Thing. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We were just talking about challenging. I was going to say, I came prepared to be challenged. But like I said to you, I don't argue scripture. I don't yeah. argue the Bible. I don't argue yeah. my beliefs. It's just like my kids. Yeah. Can, yeah. No one can argue with me. Those are my, no one can come tell me those are not my kids. Like, I'm just not going <laughs> to argue with someone about what I know to be truth for me. Mm -hmm. um, but to go back to what you said about mm -hmm. God need to be held accountable. Yes. I actually wanted to get a bit deeper understanding from you because it's like, okay, you're holding God accountable by just telling him you don't believe in him. You're not going to read his word. And, you know, I'm going to get on a podcast and I'm going to tell other people to not believe in him either. No, that is your definitely way. not. Definitely not it. Um, I, I don't tell him I'm not going to believe in him because I don't like the things he did. Um, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, that goes with the uh, divine hiddenness of himself that uh, I don't believe he exists. The I refuse to worship him thing would be because of the things he has supposedly done. Um, that would be that. Mm -hmm. So the reason I don't yeah. believe in him is because he's he's never shown up. You talk about best friend, mm -hmm. but I've was mm -hmm. I grew up in the church. Dude never showed up. I never yeah. talked to him. I mean, I tried, but he never received. I never received any messages back. Um, and and wow. curious, you seem to have this relationship, not a religion, a relationship. Um, he is your best friend and you do talk to him. Can you ask him questions? Are you able to communicate with him on the show so we can have a conversation that way? <laughs> Why is that funny? So you know Why is it always going to laugh? I mean, you talk to God. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me explain to you. Okay, I'll explain it in fairness. Let me explain why it's funny because I love this. I love, like I said, I knew, I didn't know what to expect, but I kind of knew like, okay, is, am I going to just be like attacked here? Are we going to spit out? And you're doing, and, and thank you. I'm I'm very comfortable and it's not an argumentative um, type of environment. This is an infor informal, informative and educational. So I laugh because you're like, can you talk, can you talk to God on a show right now? Well, here's the thing. 
you asked me something earlier and mm. you asked me it was either about my favorite book or it was either answering yeah. a question I remember, yeah. and i said oh how do i want to answer this lord and mm. i don't know if you caught on to that i but did, I, did I, yeah. I actually and i shouldn't have i i actually changed it up when i hear god give me an answer you'll usually hear me say thank you holy spirit it's just natural that is my way internally externally i get a guidance so can you hear huh. God talking to me? Of course not. You know, he's but not, we can he's not gonna like, hey you, Jesus, maybe? come on, sit on the podcast. What? No, it's not a seance. It's not a seance. No, he's your best friend. <laughs> you can't invite your best friend to the show. You're, can you, you know introduce what? me to your you're best friend? You're hearing, listen, I mean... you're hearing God through me right now. And I'm not okay. saying I'm God. What I'm saying oh. is I am a spirit and I am, and this is like this morning. I prayed and I yeah. said, God, whatever you want to have said on this podcast, all of you and none of me. Help me to just have a natural conversation to represent you in the best manner and use me for your glory. So I'm doing that. I'm mm. I'm, I'm doing that. I'm, I'm talking. I'm mm. representing my relationship with God. I'm talking. I'm testifying. I'm telling of the good news of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and what he's done for Takiya. And, you know, and I, and, and just to be on the serious side, we've had some great laughs here too. I know that there are many people, including yourself that are sitting here listening and going, like you said, I love that you said, it doesn't sound crazy. It sounds strange, or it may sound foreign. Hmm. I love the opportunity. I can come on and have a conversation about my personal experience. And maybe some people will go, well, let me you know, revisit sitting in the closet because you know what? Here's the thing too, Michael, have hmm. you sat down yourself and asked God why? Many times. Why, why, why? Mm -hmm. I was even and told to talk to Spider-Man and and just pretend it's Spider-Man and eventually it's going to be God. I was told that one too. That was interesting. Uh, it didn't work out so, uh, but uh, yeah, no, he yeah, doesn't answer me. He does I I, like years. I grew up in the church. All I felt was feelings it's all, and, and feelings just aren't enough and you coming know what? From, from my best friend. You know, I want him there. But you know what? I will tell, let me, let me throw out a, a, a spoiler. Okay. Uh oh. I, I haven't left the church, but I don't church the way I used to. And so I, so I did understand what you're saying. No, you're saying? Oh, okay. I don't know okay. what you did. <laughs> what, I, <laughs> what I'm saying is I had an experience being in church 25. Like I said, I didn't grow up in church. Mm -hmm. My my first encounter with anything faith was vacation Bible school in the summer. My mom was oh, like, man. you guys are out of school. Go, you know, we VBS. got sent off somewhere. I remember those. There you go. VBS. <laughs> Come on. <woo> <laughs> But um, as I got older and I made my own church, because see, here's the beauty also. Like you mm. said, you grew up in church. I imagine mm. you probably, are you a PK? Are you a PK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know. Easy to I tell, know. right? <laughs> okay. So so you, you didn't have the option or opportunity to choose God or church for yourself. It yeah, was, no, as for me in my do, house. And you're going to go. Yeah. Well, you will, mm -hmm. There you go. It was different with me. It was not something that was forced on me. I wasn't made to go. I wasn't even introduced mm. to it. I found God in my, let's see, 19 years old, 20, pregnant with my first daughter, invited to church by the daycare owner that I was working for. Nobody forced me. Nobody told me anything. I just inside, I knew that salvation, this is something that I want to receive. So my journey has been a bit different because no one ever forced it on me. No one ever made me go. And now listen, yeah. I yeah. was a stone cold, holy roller. I was yeah. in church every time the doors open Sunday um, service, Wednesday night, Bible study, Saturday morning, prayer, all of that's that. my siblings, my siblings, that, same thing. They, that, they are all in the church. Exactly. They're still in the church. So it just, whatever yeah. it was, See, it just didn't click for me. God just didn't, didn't yeah. want me as a part of his little group, I guess. So it's fine. I mean, that's not true. it's fine. I, he's, he's a documented child <laughs> killer. I don't want to, you know, be a part of that anyway. So if he doesn't want to talk to me, I'm, I'm okay with that. But this, this has been a blast. So you're mad at God because here, he picked you, he picked you last on the side. I'm not mad Hollywood at God. I'm not mad at Darth <laughs> Vader. I'm not, I'm not mad at the green goblin. I'm not mad at any of these characters. I can't be mad at them. Like they, they yeah. like, I just can't, I'm not mad for spider, at spider man but, uh, for not can showing I finish up for my me. Thought? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Sorry. And can we'll, we'll wrap okay. it up there. So yeah. that's the, yeah, we'll wrap it up. So what I was saying was I did not have that force on me. I had the opportunity to choose that relationship for myself. And so um, 
Oh, I lost my train of thought. Ooh, I sorry. lost the point of where I, do I was that. going. I do that. I but that's okay. Down. That's all right. Listen, that's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. I was going somewhere. Listen, God, if he wants me to say it, he'll bring it back to me and remind me. But go there ahead, because I know you were about there to close go. out. Yeah, we're about to close out. I, I, any last words? Where can we find your stuff? This has been a blast. Thank you so much. All of the above. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. No, this has been a blast as well. Thank you for the opportunity. I thank your listeners for, you know, humoring me, listening to me. Hopefully you'll go take a look at some of my information, some of my books. I have made it super simple to find me. Your smile is your weapon is my website, all my social media handles, and uh, the name of my podcast behind this smile. I'm streaming everywhere, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, iHeart, everywhere streaming. Mm -hmm. And again, my social handle is your smile is your weapon. That is awesome. I love that. Thank you so much. Fantastic. You're welcome back anytime. Take care. We'll stay in touch. All right. Thanks, Michael. That's all the show there is for you today. Thanks for listening. As always, you can find all things BSW related on the show's website at thebiblesayswhat.com. If you like what you heard and want to help keep the recording light on, simply go to thebiblesayswhat.com and sign up to be a supporter of the show. Your episodic tithes of a dollar or more will get you early access to each new episode on Wednesdays instead of Sundays. And no matter which platform you use to listen to your podcasts, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on the next episode. Until then, would you kindly share and review the show? Next time on The Bible Says What? A, How does a, growing a, in the Spirit work? So you're growing communion. closer to God. Exactly. Okay, so that's 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 a little bit that's a little more. Okay, so growing in the spirit is growing closer to God. Okay, now how close are right. you right now to God? I don't know uh, because oh, that's part of the that's part of the issue. <laughs>